In this video, I will cover the restoration of my 2005 Mercedes E55 AMG over the last few months and reveal the final product. Now I already detailed the engine bay on this car and installed a big heat exchanger as well as replaced the coolant. Link to those videos are in the description. I also threw on my wider SL550 wheels. Now, an important order of business on this car was to remove the door dings that it had using the paintless dent removal or PDR method. There were quite a few dings on the passenger side door on this car. I removed the door card and insulation to provide better access. Pack from Vancouver Dent Pro got to work repairing some of those door dings. PDR is not something that you can just pick up right away. It requires a lot of understanding of the properties of metal and experience with the limitations of paint. Gradually, the dings were worked out and the consistency of the panel was matched using precise hammer taps. I also had a nasty bend on the aluminum front fender which is very common on the W211 E55. And that was tapped back into shape. The body is now looking super sharp. With the door cards removed from earlier, I repaired a broken seat control where the headrest button came off. I simply unbolted it from the door panel and swapped it with another unit. I glued back the insulation and the new seat control was in. I also applied the Leather Reek Rejuvenator Oil and Pristine Clean to the interior leather and it helped to provide a better matte finish. Next I used a leather cleaner and a leather brush to scrub the steering wheel and restore a nice matte finish to the surface. Next I did the same for the shift lever. Then I repaired my broken turn signal light as well as a cracked mirror seal the replacement signal light bolts right in. Then I had to fix my Mercedes sticker on the windshield which was peeling. So I marked its position and replaced the sticker with a new one. Finally I polished the exhaust tips using mother's metal polish and a microfiber towel as well as a foam drill attachment with great results. Another dirty part on the bottom of the car was the fender liners. Each one was scrubbed down with an all-purpose cleaner and also protected. While I was here, I also installed the lowering links for the Airmatic air suspension. Then I washed the car to clean up some of the dust on the paint, because the next stage is to tackle the paint on the car. Then I applied an iron remover, which is going to remove any particulates on the surface and strip any waxes. As you can see the paint has a ton of swirl marks and really bad water spotting but it's ready for claying and polishing. To finish decontaminating the paint I run the surface down with a clay bar and clay lube. After wiping that dry I spray down the surface with diluted isopropyl alcohol. As you can see the swirling on this paint is extensive. Next I remove the door trims on the car and tape the rubber seals that are near the paint. I'm using a Griot's Garage Dual Action Polisher and Meguiar's Microfiber Cutting Pads. With a few small dabs of the Griot's Fast Correcting Cream, I spread the compound along the surface and begin moving in slow steady passes while on speed 5, also maintaining a light pressure on the machine. About 50% of each stroke is overlap. As you can see, one pass is complete when we switch from side to side motions to up and down motions or vice versa. We want to blow out the pads with compressed air every couple of passes. Also we want to swap out pads every other panel on the car. This process is continued until we are happy with the level of correction, being careful not to go too far. Once we're satisfied with the correction, we wipe away the surface with a microfiber towel and a slightly hazy surface is left behind. Now, 
we wipe down the surface with something like Gion Prep to clear the surface of any compound residue. For the finishing step, I'm using Manzerna SF3800 Show Car Finish and a Griot's Foam Finish Pad. After spreading the polish, we work in a larger area on speed 4 with only the weight of the machine now. Only a few passes are needed here. Once we wipe with a new towel, a clear finish is revealed. As we can see with this 50-50, the scratches and swirls from years of improper washing have been eliminated. We can continue this process on the whole car, even on plastic parts such as the door trims and taillights, just with less passes and pressure. Finally, I protected the car with Just Car Powerlock Plus sealant. Once the paint was done, I moved to the faded rear parcel shelf on the car. The California sun really took its toll on this part of the car. Using SEM color coat for fabrics and vinyl, I sprayed many thin coats on this panel and achieved excellent results that matched the factory finish. Now it's time to see the payoff for all the hard work. With the paint super clear, even in direct sunlight, I took the car for a drive and then proceeded to do a bunch of maintenance. I changed the engine oil and air filters. I replaced a bearing on the double idler pulley that was making noise. Then I went to service the transmission and I found that the electrical connector was wet. I went to replace that pilot bushing, which is a common issue, and the brass fitting holding it was stripped. The Mercedes dealer who did this fix years before over torqued the bolt holding the pilot bushing. Thus, the conductor plate had to be replaced and otherwise everything went back together just fine. The car drives really well right now and we'll go for a drive in the next video. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and subscribe for more videos like this.